Before we get into today's video, I would like to thank all of my lovely channel members and especially my lovely darling stewards. Bella Mare, Husky HD, Hopeful, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. Thank you for your support and also a huge thank you for all of my darling mates for your continued support. Now I hope you enjoy the video and please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you. The chains of your containment rattled as the truck carried you to your destination. The air was cold, freezing even, making your breath manifest as a fine mist. Part of your containment. In the cold, your quirk would have trouble functioning. A sudden bump on the road almost made you stumble out of your kneeling state. Not that it was required for you to kneel, but your binds were so tight it would have caused unnecessary pain in your joints. Your eyes were closed as you breathed slowly. You didn't know how long the strange event in the outside world had been going on. You had only been given minimal information as most of it, if not all, was classified. As your handlers had described it, you were given enough knowledge to survive. What annoyed you, however, was that the transport was like this. After all, you had aced your last loyalty test. You should be treated more like a human. Ah, oh, well. Considering the power you wielded, this precaution was necessary. No matter how overkill you felt it was. You opened your eyes slowly. The movement alone caused the automated sedation turret of your containment chamber to click. You tilted your head. It was adjusting its scope. I never move and it would be bye-bye conscious. Well, considering the length of the drive, perhaps this might actually be a good idea. Then again, you didn't know how long you already had been driving, and you definitely wanted to see the outside at least once. You yawned. The opening your mouth made the turret prime its shot. You closed it quickly. Not like you would use your quirk on a machine. It was too cold anyways. Oh well. The Germans and their superstitions. You managed to not upset the machine any further during the rest of the ride. And when the truck stopped, it was remotely disabled. You heard many voices outside. And that's when the door of the truck opened. Your eyes fell upon a large crowd of civilians. Their faces both afraid and curious. From the truck sides appeared four men clad in black and orange uniforms. They were agents of the Global Defense Effort, a unique branch of the German military, of all things. Combining science, religion, and of course, military might in one all-devouring and powerful organization. Directly ruled and ordered by Germany's leader, Otto Apocalypse, the Holy Blade of Germany, Son of St. Clair, the woman who reunited Germany after Quirks first emerged. She single-handedly prevented a civil war between Quirk users and the Quirk less who at the time were in the majority. And afraid. Since the third generation of Quirks, the GDE had built containment facilities all around the world. Using the German Quirk evaluation test to figure out the maximum potential potential of a quirk before it could awaken. And sadly, your quirk was considered a coat black. Meaning, a quirk so powerful it could cause the apocalypse. That's why you had been contained afterwards. Kept in a cool and modern environment, you were given a standardized human cell. It had a TV, a computer that was connected through a GDE-filtered internet, and you were taught by scientists, so you were actually quite smart. And kept fit by military drill sergeants who were so scared of your quirk, they never took off their helmets. 
The four men entered the back of the truck, undoing your chains, letting you free. The people outside gasped in fear when you were held up. Surrounding you like bodyguards, the men then escorted you into the large building. Having seen its advertisements, you knew this was the Hero High School UA. Alright, weren't you high school age now? Ugh, what you must have missed by now. Truly was a strange sight, wasn't it? A young girl, blonde with hair so long it reached past her hip, skin so white and delicate like she had never seen the sun, dressed in a straight jacket, escorted by armed to the teeth guards with specialty equipment, brought into UA. And there, you met the principal, a tiny rat creature named Nezu. He looked like a plushie you owned. The agents even saluted as they allowed you to roam free. One of them even said, Ugh, I put on a pause. Which roughly translated to, I need a break. Your attention switched to Nezu. I'm really glad the GD is sending us reinforcements, but I never expected someone so young. You smiled at the rat. I'm GD Subject 0027. Just call me 27. He stopped and turned to face you. And what's your real name? You blink confused. Um, if you don't mind me asking, how old were you when they took you? Four? Nezu's eyes widened with shock. Oh dear! It wasn't public knowledge how young people were sometimes when they were taken. Seeing if the Germans were a direct opposite to what the Liberation Front was preaching. Instead of free quirk use with no consequences, they took a hardline approach on controlling the evolution of them. Removing individuals considered too powerful from the gene pool via incarceration and separation from the masses. With Nezu at the helm, you entered what seemed to be a briefing room. All eyes were on you, which made you blush and smile. Don't mind me, just your little ace in the hole. Around you were a bunch of adults, but also some children about your age. Interesting. You looked at each and every one of them intently, mostly out of confusion. You had genuinely assumed you'd be the youngest present for this. This is 27. She's our reinforcement from our friends in Germany. Whispers broke out. The fuck is she gonna do? Gruffed a blonde boy, who was... So your type. Blonde, muscular, and judging by the outburst, a fire personality. Mmm, mama likey. As we know from Aoyama's reports, all for one is in the possession of a self-replicating Nomu. The quirk used for it, Danger Sense, allows it to create up to 400 clones of itself, if it feels in danger. We're already dealing with far too many adversaries here. Her only goal is to fight it one-on-one. -on -one. Well, I suppose one on 400. This caused nervous whispers. And again, the blonde shouted, And the fuck is she gonna do against 400 Nomu? I'm so glad that you ask! You shouted, and the blonde bit his lower lip. You closed your eyes with an evil grin as you began explaining. I'm 27. My defect is called Swarm. It allows me to transform any meat I ingest into worms with adorable little wings. <laughs> and my little friends can enter through any orifice of anything more intelligent than an amoeba, usually via ears or nose. They make their way to the brain, latch onto it, and effectively take full control, putting them under my command. A green-haired boy placed a hand on his mouth, and you could clearly hear him speak to himself. If only I had my notepad such an interesting quirk. A man with blonde black hair then spoke up. It was such a quirk. 
Can we be sure you're here to help us? My loyalty evaluation test, or how the Germans call it, Der Allgemeine Verhaltens- und Loyalitätstest des Neuen Deutschen Glaubens, was graded with the equivalent of an A+. So, uh, you can be certain I'm on your side. You broke the silence that followed with a dry. A plus means it's good. Well, I suppose that's enough. What about the normals you'll convert? What will happen to them after the fight is over? Asked the black-haired man with a stern expression. I'll just order them to self-delete. It was your nonchalantness about the entire topic that earned your nervous laughter and response. Finally, Nezu clapped his hands. Uh, well, looks like we all got on the right foot off today. <laughs> uh, let's continue with our briefing. During it, you were informed of everything that had happened in Japan over the last year. Crazy how all this crap happened so quickly. On your end, it sounded like enough stuff went down, with attacks, events, and combat, that it would fit for all three years of high school, if not more. But not like you could 100% focus on the conversation. Your interest in the blonde was too strong. You wanted him. Sadly, though, he wouldn't stay for too long. Huh. The big action would be soon, after all, but that was okay. You had just enough time to walk around for a bit, right? Well, only if you could. After the briefing, you were brought alone into one of the campus's dorms, its windows and doors thoroughly sealed, so that none of your little ones might escape. There were two dedicated hours you could leave, and that was only with GDE agents right behind you. But you did feel a little like royalty. During eating times, you sat alone with two armed guards at a table full of delicious meat. Cooked, broiled, fried, no veggies, maybe a little bit of sauce. It was a pure dream. Since in confinement, you were fed only meat when they wanted to experiment on you or your little ones, or when you had a protein deficiency. With the smile of a child in a candy store, you shuffled the thick meat into your gut. It was almost better than the stuff served at the GDE. Hey, asshole! You were so sunken into your eating, you completely missed an altercation. One of the guards was cursing in German at the blonde guy who cursed back at him, neither of them understanding what the other said. Hey, Bakugo, was it? You mused. Both the guard and the boy looked at you now. In German, the guard told you that Bakugo was trying to force his way to you to eat with you, apparently. Well, can he? Was all that you asked. Bakugu didn't understand a word of your conversation. He felt really out of place, and it was making him mad. He says if you have an extensive examination afterwards, it is allowed. Examination? For what? You licked your lips, tasting the fat and oil from the meat as you did. Bakugu then scratched his shoulder awkwardly. Yeah, Sure. Whatever. You clapped your hands. Er hat zugestimmt, er will hier sitzen. You said excited. The guard stepped aside. Using his walkie-talkie to phone in what was happening, to command, before stepping aside. Using his walkie-talkie to phone in what was happening, to command. Moments later, Bakugu sat down with a scowl, and you snickered, looking at him with a dumb grin. And, lover boy, what brings you here? I'm always interested in hearing about someone who thinks they're better than me. You tilted your head. 
No offense, but with how my defect works, I might not be better than you directly, but you'd certainly be good enough for me. Hell does that mean? You slice through a steak, your tongue sliding across your teeth. I could turn you into my plaything at any moment, and your power would be mine. You started eating the piece of meat, and after swallowing and sighing, pleased, you chuckled. <laughs> See, for me, the entire world is a chessboard, a gender bent one. The queen is the most important piece, but she cannot walk around very much. And if she is destroyed, the game is over. And the other pieces and pawns, whoever I want. Tell me, Bakugo. <laughs> and the other pieces and pawns are whoever I want. So tell me, Bakugo. Your power is this good because you are you? But what if you weren't you? You put the silverware on the plate, holding your head up with your hands, knuckles wide as you duck into your cheeks. What if you were a loyal little thrall under the command of the goddess who created you? A bead of sweat ran down his forehead. What if whatever I said, the only thing you could respond with was, Yes, my queen. Defiantly, Bakugo stared you down. I doubt you little worms can beat me. You're right, I twitched subtly. You reached forward, placing two fingers under his chin, lifting his gaze up, but... <laughs> lifting his gaze up just a bit. I want to carry a child. His pupils widened. What the hell is this bit? Bakugo gulped. How about it? I'd let you be king. We would be like termites. Do you know how they function? The two lovers find a soft, moist crevice. Then sear themselves inside, and they mate, they mate. The queen then lays her eggs, creating the first generation of little workers. And unlike ants, the male remains at the queen's side until he or she passes. Isn't that romantic? Why was his heart beating faster? Finally, you retreated your hand. Uh, but don't worry, Bakugo, I'm loyal to my country. I would never do that to anyone. His right eye twitched. What's wrong? Did I turn you on? You purred. He wanted to pounce you right here and there. And with a blush, he started eating his own food. The two of you remained silent throughout the rest of the meal until the end before he walked to his examination. Little side note, the guards switch out around 10 p.m. to 10 10 p.m. You have two minutes at best. Don't disappoint me. You are sitting on your bed. Rocking back and forth, expectantly. While one of your worms crawled along your arm. On close inspection, they had the appearance of checkered beetle larvae, with antlion heads and mandibles, and two small translucent wings that were strong enough to carry the abomination they were small, about the size of your thumb, fingernail. Ten or six. He wasn't coming. Uh, just a goody two-shoes here, after all. Ten or seven. But he has a cute ass, doesn't he? Ten or eight. 
and that temperament. Sure, he wasn't part of the hive, but he could certainly intimidate your children to following him. 1009. God, you are so hardy. 1010. From beneath your door, you saw the shadow of two feet. You bit your lower lip in anticipation. Snapping your fingers, causing your little pet to fly into a nearby bug zapper that had been set up for you. Bakugo opened your door. With a racing heart, he forced himself to not look at you. But you just smiled, almost innocently. I... I admit I don't know why I'm here, to be honest. Well... I do. You said seductively as you jumped up from your seat. Slowly you approached him until you pressed your body against his. You're here for me, right? You flashed your teeth. Because if you were here for my little ones, I would have to disappoint you. All the girls in my class are just stupid extras that no one should care about. Oh, extras, you say? Like in a play or in a video game? He didn't respond. Not even nod. Mm, let me guess. Uh, the circumstances around my existence are... Uh, you gasped. He had placed his hands on your shoulders. Finally, he looked at you. He smirked. Let's just say someone who is so strong they are legally not allowed outside of some military complex. That is much more than some extra. Ironically, this makes you extra. Cute word, play lover boy. You purred. Before quickly closing the distance to his lips. He was completely taken off guard. But he didn't hate it. He just wrapped his arms around your body tightly, while the bells of your straitjacket cracked due to the movement. He tried pushing your tongue into his mouth, but alas, to no avail. Disappointed, you popped off his mouth, giving him a needy, almost bratty look. <laughs> he chuckled as he wiped away your spittle around his lips. Let's get you out of those clothes first, huh? I have a feeling we're gonna struggle with that. Kinky. You mused. However, since the belts on your arms were already open, it was much easier to remove them. Your entire outfit was held together by just six belts on your back. And Bakugo nailed sharply when you realized you didn't wear anything beneath it. You look surprised, lover boy. Honestly, I never thought I'd get this far. You leaned up to meet his face, or reaching for one of his hands. Tightly gripping his wrist, you forced him to touch your chest. He inhaled, feeling your soft, perfect skin. Your mouth twitched up into an evil grin. And now you turn off your brain and let your instincts do the rest. There's nothing you can do to me that is more painful than the stuff the scientists did to me as they studied me. So go ahead. His eyes were half-lidded and drool was coming out of his mouth. His grip tightened, causing you to moan. Biting the tip of your tongue for balance, you threw yourself backwards on your bed, pulling him down with you. He grunted, slamming his other hand brutally on your body, his fingers going white from the tightness. Meanwhile, you reached for the belt of his pen. 